This is the exam review for semester number two. We're going to evaluate 81 to the 3 fourths power. So a couple different ways that we can think about this. This is the fourth root because the denominator is a 4 of 81 to the third power. And because 81 is 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, we know that it has four threes in there, three to the fourth power. So the fourth root is three, and three cubed is 27. When we simplify, more than one way to handle this, but a negative exponent is going to flip everything that's there, because it gets distributed to every exponent. So we have 4 to the negative 1, x to the negative 1, y to the positive 1, because you multiply, 16 to the negative 1, x to the negative 1, and y to the negative 2. So we're going to flip everything over. So it's 16xy squared. This y is going to stay put. And then 4x. We can reduce and we get 4. We can reduce and they're gone. And then we have y cubed. Now we, we cannot multiply the 3 and the 4 together because the exponents are different. So we're going to distribute this in and get 3 3 to the third times 4 to the 3 sixth. We multiply it to both of the exponents, very similarly to this one. That's 3 times 4 to the half, which 4 to the half is the square root of 4, which is 2, so the answer is 6. We're doing the cubed root, cubed root of 8. 8 is made up of 2 times 2 times 2. Then there are 3x's and an extra x. There are 3y's and an extra 3y's. So we have 3 of a kind, which gives us 2. We have 3 of a kind in the x's. We have 3 of a kind twice in the y's. So we have y squared. So in the radical, we still have that x left over. So we need that to be the cubed root because that's what the original problem was of x. To subtract, the radicals have to be identical. So the cubed root of 81, we already know that 3 to the 4th power is 81. There's nothing you can do here. can't reduce the cube root of 3. We're looking for 3 of a kind. So we're going to bring that 3 out in front. That leaves one of the 3's left inside. This is 1 cube root of 3. So now we have 3 minus 1, which is 2 of the cube root of 3. So here we can divide first. This is the cube root. 3 goes into 19 6 times. So that's with 1 left over and 3 goes into 12 4 times. So that's 64. And the cube root of 64 is 4. 4 times 4 times 4 makes 64. So I believe this is an exponent. So we distribute there. Well, there's, okay. Let's see another way to do this. I see that there 
exponents are the same. So if we have 56 to the seventh power and we pull that one fourth out and we have the square already on the outside, that's the value of eight. 56 divided by seven is eight. Here we could multiply to get a half. So then we're going to do the square root, which is a half. This is two times two times two. When you do a square root, you're looking for pairs of the same thing. So we have two root two. On the flip side, we're working with square roots. This is 3x squared, so we have to simplify this a little bit. So we're going to call this 3x cubed. Now this is 25 times 5. That makes 125 times x. And this is 4 times 5 times we have x twice it's a total of 4 times 6 times and a 7th time so we're going to be able to bring the square root of 5 out so we're going to times this by 5 that leaves with a 5x left inside we're going to take the square root of 4 and we're going to bring that value outside with one set of two x's, another set of x's, a third set of x's. So x cubed with a 5 and an x left inside. So that's a total of 15 x cubed. Five x inside the square root minus 4x cubed, the square root of 5x. Now we have like terms, and we can call this 11x cubed, the square root of 5x. So that looks like letter C. If we were going to solve, we would minus 5, that's the cube root of 5x plus 4 equals 1. We will cube both sides, that leaves us with 5x plus 4 and 1 times 1 times 1 which is 1, minus this, and divide by 5. we're going to graph, we would do the cube root graph, then we would do our translation. h is 3, k is 2. So the cube root graph is going to basically 0, 0, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, and then what gets 2? The cube root of 8 is 2. cube root of 8 is 2, the cube root of 1 is 1, cube root of 0 is 0, cube root of negative 1 is negative 1, so there is y equals the cube root of x. So now we need to translate that three units right and two units up. And there it is. Y equals 
cube root of x minus 3. That means it moves 3 units to the right and 2 units up. The domain is all real numbers and the range is all real numbers. Here we have a square root graph, which looks like that. And then this is a k value because the 2 is not inside of the parentheses or not inside the radical. So that means it's moving it up 2. So that's letter B. Y equals the square root of x plus 2. The domain is x is greater than or equal to 0. The range is y is greater than or equal to 2. Here we would solve, subtract the 15. That would make us 40, divide by 5, which is 8. And then what we need to do is take the 8 and multiply it by 4 thirds. Well, the way we can calculate this by hand is 8 to the 1 third, because we're going to pull that 4 out. So this is still a denominator of 3, so this is the cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 4th power is 16. Last one. This is x plus 17 equaling x minus 3. We would need to square both sides. And when we square both sides, you have to write your binomial twice, and then you would foil this together, get x squared minus 6x plus 9. Because we have two different types of x's, we need to bring all of our x's over to the same side of the equal sign. Minus 17, that should be negative 8. So that gives us x plus 1, x minus 8. So this is x equals negative 1, x equals positive 8. And if we think about plugging this into our answers, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. A square root cannot equal negative 4. So this is extraneous. So 8 is our only answer. 8 is the only answer. So on the quiz, on the exam, it may say negative 1 and 8, but no, negative 1 is not a solution. It doesn't work in the problem. The square root of negative 1 plus 17 is the square root of 16, which is 4, but negative 1 plus, or negative 1 minus 3 is not 4. It's negative 4. It doesn't work. All right, now I'm going to actually jump back to the final section. All right, it's the final section of the exam review. I'm going to do this out of order. Okay, here we would cross things off if we could. We cannot reduce the 4 and the 2. This is already simplified. Here we would factor apart, use a little factor by grouping skills here perhaps. Five times, or two times five perhaps, or two times two, that's four. Five times two is ten. 
So this is going to be that would be positive 4 and a negative 10. Nope, we've got to take that back. This is 4 and still not working. And here we are, negative 4 and negative 5 make negative 9 and you multiply here to get your positive 10. Phew, that was a pain. X and X, 3 and 2, positive 3 and negative 2. So those cross off, and we're left with 2X minus 5, X plus 3. X plus 3, be sure your signs match up right. Don't get tricked. Don't get tricked thinking that it's A. Looks like it's C. So here you can pull out a GCF, pull out a 2, that leaves it with x squared plus 4x plus 4. And this is x plus 2, x minus 2. And then this can be factored to be x plus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2, x minus 2. Those cross off. And you're left with 2 times x plus 2 over x minus 1. Letter C. Here are these different ways we could do it. We could say 3 times 6 is 18. x to the 5th and x is x to the 6th. y to the 4th. 72 x to the fourth and y squared. Sometimes that helps because it just eliminates out some other reducings. Now we will have to go back and reduce the rest of the way. So here we know that 18 times 4 18 is 72. So this is going to reduce with the 72 to become a 4. We'll reduce here to become a 2. We'll reduce here to become a 2. So our final answer is x squared, y squared with a 4 in the denominator. Letter D. Here we're going to factor apart, so 3x comes apart and we have x plus 2, x minus 2, x plus 2. This is x minus 4 and this is 3x times another x. So the x plus 2's cross off, the x, the 3x crosses off and we're left with x minus 4 and an x, x minus 2. And that looks like letter B. Nothing can happen to the top. This bottom is going to factor to be x minus 1. Square it, multiply the 2 together, and square it. Those are going to cross off, and you're left with x plus 5 over x minus 1. That's letter B. When we divide, we're going to take the second fraction and flip it. So we have 4x plus 5 over x squared, x over x plus 1, 2 times x plus 5. So those are going to cross off, the 2 is going to cross out with the 4, the x is going to reduce with one of the squares, and we're left with a 2, an x plus a 1, and an x on the bottom. That looks like letter A.
here we'll factor 2x. That leaves us with x, 1, and 5. So that's 2, and that's 5. So that's going to be a positive 5 and a negative 2. That gives us positive 3. Multiplies to be negative 5. All right, looking good. Here's 6x. Now we're going to multiply. This one is 1 over, so we're going to flip it to be 1 over. Can't pull out a 2, but you can pull out an x. So the 2x plus 5s cross off. And we're left with x minus 1 over 6x squared. Looks like a letter A. Here we would need a 3 on top and a 3 on bottom. A 2x on top and a 2x on bottom. That's 15 over 6x minus 2x over 6x. So that's actually a total of 15 minus 2x over 6x. And that looks like letter A. Subtracting. First we need to factor this apart. x plus 1 over x plus 2, x plus 2, minus 6, x minus 2, x plus 2. So what I notice is the denominators have to be the same, but this has an x minus 2 in it. So we need to put an additional x minus 2 here, so we multiply it in. And over here we need two different x plus 2's, so I have to put another x plus 2 to both of those sides. So this is going to give me x squared minus x minus 2 minus a negative 6 times x is negative 6x and a negative 6 times 2 is a negative 12. That's where people are going to mess up. It's got to be negative 6 times 2. And we have the x minus 2, x plus 2, x plus 2. So collecting our like terms, we have x squared minus 7x minus 14 over x minus 2, and that's x plus 2 squared. And that looks like it's letter A. Here we're going to look at our least common multiple. What's the smallest number all of these values, 6, 3, 2, and 8, all go into? So they would all go into 24. So I'm going to multiply the top of every one of these fractions by 24. And when I do that, I can reduce with the denominators. that's going to be 3 times x, which is 3x minus 12x over 8x minus 4. So that leaves me with negative 9x over 8x minus 4. And it looks like we can still factor something out of here. Negative 9x for 2x minus 1. And there it is, letter D. So our least common multiple is going to be the x plus 5 and the x minus 3. So x plus 5, x minus 3, x plus 5, x minus 3 x plus 5, x minus 3. 
So the x plus 5's cross off, and I'm left with a 3x minus 9. The minus 3's cross off, and I'm left with a 2x plus 10. Plus x plus 5's cross off, and I'm left with an x minus 3. So that's 3x minus 9 over 3x plus 7. And it looks like we pulled the 3 out, and that would be letter B. Here's a proportion. We're going to cross multiply. Negative 4 times x minus 3 and 5 times x plus 3. Add it across to get 9x. Subtract it across to get negative 3. And that's negative 1 third for x. When you divide both sides by 9, you get 3 over 9, which is 1 third, but it's negative 3 over 9, so it's negative 1 third. Here we can multiply by 4x, 4x, and 4x. Crosses out the x's, crosses out the 4's, crosses off the x's. That's going to leave us. 4 times 5, and that's going to leave us 7 times x, and that's going to leave us a negative 36. So I subtract that 20 over to get negative 56, and divide to get negative 8. Last one. Well, here we can do x and x minus 3, x and x minus 3, x and x minus 3. So the x minus 3's cross off, and you're left with 2x. X's cross off, and you're left with x minus 3. Here would be x squared minus x. Now we need to bring all the x's over to the same side. So this is a total of 3. So I'm going to minus 3x. And I'm going to add 3. So that gives us x squared minus 4x plus 3. That equals 0. xx x minus 3 minus 1. So 0 product property tells us our answers are 3 and 1. But when you plug in a 3 here, notice that is 3 minus 3. That's 0. So this is an extraneous solution. Only 1 is the answer. Don't be surprised if you see that. That's all of it. Good luck, everybody.